As promised, we cut it in half. This is a sagittal view of your skull. Again, we will follow the sequence by Hyman. Let's start. This space right here, this is the cerebellar or posterior fossa. The shelf that divides this space from the next space. This is the tentorium. This thing right here, part of your tympanic bullae, that is the petrosal bone or the petrous part of the petromastoid bone. And the whole of that thing is the internal auditory meatus. We move on to this section right here, not including this part, just up until here. This is the cerebral or middle fossa. The important feature that you will find in this part is this thing right here. There is an important part of the brain that sits on this dip in the bone and that is known as the cella tersica. It's the pituitary gland that sits here. Why does it have to sit in such a special place in the bone? Because if you look at it in the brain, it kind of looks like a bag of testicles that just kind of dangle around. So it has to be somehow secure. This sinus, this main cavity of your presphenoid bone, that is the sphenoidal sinus. And up here is your frontal sinus, because what bone is this? Why, that's the frontal bone. After your cerebral fossa, we next have this part. It's pretty small. That is your anterior fossa or olfactory fossa. These things lined up in black, that is known as the cribriform plate, which is best seen when you actually look at the whole skull. So let's take that skull again. As we look through, you're going to see that part that kind of has a lot, or it kind of looks spongy, like a, very porous. That is the cribriform plate. We have the nasal cavities right here. And what is not seen here is there is typically like a bone that covers this, like it's like a plate of bone that covers this part. That is what we call the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, or in some texts, they call that the mesethmoid. And what you'll see here in the nasal cavity would be, of course, the conche or the turbinated bones. The ones right next to the cribriform plate, these are the ethmoturbinal bones or the ethmoid labyrinth. And then you have the smaller part here, which would be your maxilloturbinals. And then you have the ones up here, which would be your nasoturbinals. Your cribriform plate, the mesethmoid right smack in the middle that forms your nasal septum, which is not seen here as well as the ethmoid labyrinth, those would be part of the ethmoid bone. Remember that the ethmoid bone is kind of just this bone right here when we look at the exterior of the skull. If we look at it from this view, that's when most of it is actually revealed. That is a sagittal view of the skull. So if you want to know more or if you want to review apart from this video, you can also check out, of course, our main references, which would be Hyman. We also have the atlases by Deulis and Pulera, as well as the one by Cochrane. And I would like to add another atlas, the one by Fishbeck and Sebastiani. That is a sagittal view of the skull. I'll see you guys next time with the lower jaw. Toodles!